Hello, beloved. I know it is early, right? And I am doing a Facebook Live. So I understand if I don't get a lot of people to uh, log on and hear this message. But certainly, if you hear it afterwards, I encourage you to comment. I encourage you to share with others. I titled this, Doing Your Best, Whenever Possible, Do Your Best to Keep the Peace. That's what the scripture says. Um, I know... It's the holiday season. I know it's Christmas, but for those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, it's Christmas every day, right? Hey, evangelist Karen, it's Christmas every day. So, you know, we thank God for a tree and a gift and beautiful songs about Jesus. You can go into secular places, right? And you will hear songs about Jesus in the grocery store, in the um, mall, in the department stores. And that's great. That's great. The reason I titled this that is because this may sound, I don't know, because it's its the joy of the season, the love of the season, um, yet I felt it important to share a couple of things that have I have encountered in maybe the last two weeks. And what I have encountered is something that honestly I do not encounter. Our family, uh, my five brothers and sisters, my mom and dad, were the first African-American family to move to our neighborhood uh, when I was in elementary school. And we faced a lot of racist taunts, comments. Um, it, it, it was, and in, let me see, I was in the third grade. I was, I was very unfamiliar with racism. I was un familiar with being called the n-word. I didn't even know what the n-word was. I remember one of my uh, friends, parents called me a good n-girl, right? And I came home because all I heard uh, was I was a good girl. And I told my uh, mom that Don's dad said I was a good n-girl. My father heard it. Oh, it was not good. It did not end well. That was the day. This was before Roots came out, right? <laughs> that was the day that I realized that's not a good word. Well, here lately, we've seen an increase of swastikas and kids being taunted at school uh, with... Um, go back to Mexico, go back to Africa, chants in the cafeteria. Uh, we've seen a lot of things that have increased in this season. And the one of the things the Spirit of the Lord has impart, imparted into me over the last few days is that a spirit of hate has been released. And I want to encourage you, black, white, yellow, brown, red, Christians, do your best whenever possible to keep the peace. I had one encounter at the um, hospital. Uh, Y'all pray for me. I valet at the hospital, right? I, I valet at the hospital, and so the far right lane is closer to the building. There's a middle lane and a far left lane. I pulled in the middle lane, and in pulling into the middle lane, uh, the there was two cars on my right, one was a truck, lady was walking to her truck. I'm now pulling into the second lane. There's a car in front of me. I'm getting out. The gentleman is walking to get my keys. She says a racial slur, stupid N-word. A-hole a was also the word she added. In shock and dismay, I have not, I'm telling you, I'm 49. I can't tell you when was the last time I had somebody within earshot <laughs> say that. And I said, okay. I said, did she just, did she just curse me? Did she just call me out of my name? So the attendant was like, no, I don't know. I don't know. So he takes my keys. A young man walks to my car, who's always there when I go to uh, my doctor. All my doctors are in this building. And, um, 
he says, she did. I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'm so sorry. I said, that's okay. I said, you know what? She needs Jesus. She needs prayer. I'll pray for her. I said, because I'm going to keep the peace. I said, but I can't believe she did that. They kept apologizing and apologizing for her. And I said, I said, but you know what? She is leaving the hospital. Perhaps she got bad news. And that's her reaction. Well, when she pulled off, now listen to me very carefully. Those of you who know me, I have all types of friends. I do business with everybody. I try to love everybody. When I'm in the schools, I love my chocolate, vanilla, caramel, pink babies equally. Their parents know it. The teachers know it. So far, far from a racist, okay? But I want, I want to lay the foundation. She pulled off. I see the bumper sticker of who perhaps she voted for. It was the name that starts with a T. I said, okay. And I said, well, she needs Jesus. We're going to pray. So the young man who walks to my car, he says, oh, he says to the other guy, did you see her bump, her, her license plate? My license plate says he's able. So the older gentleman says, yes, yeah, she does need prayer. She does need Jesus. I said, okay. Well, you, we don't know what type of, type of news uh, she received. Well, the truth is, um, you know, I could have been going in there to get bad news. And because we just don't know where people are, do your best to keep the peace. So I'm in the grocery store the other day. Now, mind you, I'm experiencing all of these reports in the news about things that are happening, increase of racist attacks, um, people being put in in negative situations. We know the shootings of our young black men, but I'm I'm not really talking about that. And I'm challenging Christians today, black, white, male, female, old, young. When you see an injustice that is involving race, the young man in South Carolina who went into the church, he said he went in there to kill those black people in Bible study. In Bible study. He said he wanted to start a race war. After he was arrested, they took him to Burger King, McDonald's, wherever they took that young man before they took, to, took him to jail. Now, you know that would not have happened in other situations. Well, he was just um, sentenced, found guilty, and they were in the process of deciding if he should get uh, life in prison or uh, the lecture chair, whatever they do, lethal injection. I'm not here to talk about that. What I'm here to talk about is that there has been a spirit of hate, a spirit of anger that has been released over this country. And I am encouraging Christians, if you are white, you are my Caucasian brothers, my Caucasian sisters who I love with the love of the Lord, and you know it. We had relationship long before Mr. T entered into president-elect. I want to encourage you, if you encounter these situations and you see, you witness, you hear of your friends, your family, your peers speaking in a way that is encouraging or not denouncing racism, you must speak to it as a Christian. If you are an African American and you, your family, you have family members, you have friends, you have coworkers, whoever it is, and you are encountering these situations where you are hearing people who are not denouncing racism, who are doing the slurs, who are doing the little undercut jokes, you must as a Christian, as a lover of Jesus Christ, who is love and loves everyone and is not a respecter of person, you must speak against it. You must say something in love and by all means seeking to keep the peace. But we must speak the truth in love so that we can build one another up because that is what God requires. The kingdom is everyone. Now, absolutely, we all have differences. We have cultural differences, family differences, right? But this thing that we're seeing is not good and it's not healthy. So I'm in the grocery store and I left my Kroger card. And uh, I said to the gentleman next to me, who doesn't loan their Kroger card? Because they get points, right? I said, sir, may I borrow your Kroger card? He said something. And then I dismissed it. I dismissed it. I'm on the phone with a friend girl. I said, wait a minute. I think this guy just said something to me. Now, he certainly doesn't have to let me use his credit card, right? But who doesn't let somebody use their Kroger card? 
Don't you know I can just walk up to the counter and get another one? No big deal. So I'm talking to her. I said, wait a minute. I'm going to ask him again. But as I'm asking him, I'm walking to the counter to get another card. I look in my wallet. I realize, oh, I have my card. Now, I know you can enter your phone number and all of that. But I asked him again because I wanted to be clear. I didn't want to jump to conclusions. So I said, sir, may I use your, um, borrow your uh, Kroger card? He said, no, not, I'm sorry, ma'am, no, or no, get your own. Uh, the what the what? 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 I said, I said, sir, you need Jesus. You really do. I said, your response was, was not necessary. It was not appropriate. It, it just was not called for. So by now, I, I have the card. It's been applied. I have a little number. It's been applied. I said, Lord, this is this spirit that has been released. It's Christmas. People buy people's groceries in line. What's a credit? What is a Kroger card? And so I want to encourage you, my brothers, my sisters, male, female, lovers of Jesus Christ. God is love. God is love. There's nothing about God that should invoke hate because you prefer a person or because a person has come on the scene and has given you a little bit of something in you to feel like you can rise up and treat people a different way. I don't quite understand that because somebody could be having a moment like you have in the moment or you didn't start feeling yourself and their reaction could be totally different than mine was in those situations. I grew up in racist situations. I grew up being called that. I grew up with teachers, only black girl in the school, in my elementary school, my brother, th sixth grade, me, fourth grade. When he went on to junior high, I was the only one. Then another family moved way down the street and they were there. But I, there were times I was in that school all by myself. I have experienced racism, but I have to admit and, you know, in corporate America, you deal with things. But, you know, you move on. You keep it pushing. You love God. You trust God for the purpose and the plan of your life. But I want to encourage us as Christians, as lovers of Jesus Christ, not because it's the Christmas season, but I think the message will hold beyond today, that we must, we must challenge people. We, when we see these times, these moments, these increases, we must speak up. No, that's not how we treat people. That's not how we talk about people. We must love. We must come together. We must come together. If those who want to continue to behave that way, want to continue to behave that way, let them. But whoever you voted for, it doesn't matter. Because when you get to glory, matter of fact, let's before that, when you're on your deathbed, they don't care who you voted for. You don't care who the doctor was who voted for you, who who you, who they voted for. You want to be treated, right? You don't care about that. When you get to glory, it ain't going to matter. God ain't going to look in, at, at, at the book and say, next to your name, that's written who you voted for. But what he does want to know is what did you do in this body? How did you treat people? Oh, the cross is real. The vertical part is real. That's you and God. But the horizontal part is equally important. And guess what? It's shorter. It stretches from right to left. This is our relationship with others. This is how we treat others. So, beloved, whenever possible, do your best to keep the peace. Always speaking the truth in love to build one another up. For it is the will of God that we believe and is the will of God that we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Maybe that's the challenge. We don't love ourselves right, so we don't know how to equally love others. And this is perhaps why our country has encountered so many challenges. But this is the country that has on its money and has in its constitution and it has on its declaration and has on its buildings in Washington. In God, we trust. And so we trust God. But I want to encourage you, love somebody, despite what color they are, despite their economic status, encourage someone, and whenever possible, do your best to keep the peace. God bless you this day.